So we've previously learned what an array is, how to create one, access array items, and add items onto an array. But let's dive deeper into arrays so we're a little bit more comfortable working with them. Now you'll see arrays everywhere when you're working with PHP. So understanding how to use, manipulate them is absolutely crucial. So first, let's just refresh our memory on the basics. We know that we can create an array by creating a variable and then assigning an array to that. Now we can assign, I didn't mention before, but we can assign an empty array if we want to. So let's do a var dump on names and just see what we get out in the browser. Let's take a look. We see that we get an empty array. So we can in fact do this if we wanted to initialize an array and then add values to it later on. Now, of course, we know that what we can do is go ahead and actually assign values when we create an array. And then we see the following when we go ahead and do a var dump on that. You may also see, and I already mentioned this, the array keyword used. Now this uses uh, rounded parentheses, so it will look a bit like that. So if you do see this, it's exactly the same as what we've already done. You can see that when I go ahead and refresh here in the browser, we get no difference at all. Now, there's nothing wrong with using either syntax, but I'm sure you can guess which one's better. The two square brackets are a lot easier to type and a lot easier to read. Uh, and for this reason, I always use square brackets and I'll be doing so throughout the course. So again, we know how to access an array value. Let's just return these two square brackets and we'll go ahead and output the first name here. So let's go ahead and echo out names zero. We know that that will give us the value Alex. And we've also gone ahead and var dumped, which is why we see both of these uh, just in here. So we also know that along the way, if we wanted to, we could go ahead and add a value to this. So for example, if I wanted to add in Dale to this array, we know that that will now give us an array with three items. Uh, and then we'll be able to access that later on if we need it. Okay, so let's start to dive deeper now into arrays. We'll cover different index types. We'll also cover something called multi-dimensional arrays. And we'll also look at a couple of array functions that are built into PHP that will help us along the way. So we know that by doing a var dump, we have something called numerical indexes. So these are just starting from zero and incrementing upwards. So sometimes this can get a little bit tricky when you're trying to pick out values, but as long as you know that it starts from zero, you shouldn't have too much trouble. Now, the reason that we do have numerical indexes in this case is because we only have values in our array. We haven't specified that we wanted a particular key. Because PHP doesn't know if we want to name these different values, they're automatically assigned numbers. Now, if we wanted to create an array that had specific keys, and this is called an associative array, uh, we would do something like the following. So let's get rid of this. Now, let's say we had a people array, and in here we wanted to store different people with different values assigned to them people. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this down onto a new line just by hitting uh, return a couple of times, just because it's a little bit easier to go ahead and type this way and see what's in the array. Okay, so previously we did something like Alex, then we had a comma, and then we had say Billy. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna say, well, Alex, I want as the actual index name. And what I've done here is I've created an equal sign and a greater than sign. And all this does is it says, well, I want to assign the value 26 to Alex. Now let's do the same thing on a new line with Billy and go ahead and say 21. So just imagine that these are ages of these different people. Let's do a var dump on this and see how this looks in terms of what we have now. So now you can see we have an array with two items in still, but this time rather than numerical indexes, we have strings as the index name just here. So we have Alex and Billy, and then we have a value assigned to each of those. So the values of this array are now 26 and 21, and we have keys defined as strings. So why would you want to do this? Well, in reality, if you're working with more complex data, it's nice to be able to assign keys to this data so we know what to access. Now, before we were doing things like echo people zero, which is a little bit weird because maybe we'll want to access this by a specific key. Now let's take a look at what happens when we do this. Undefined offset zero. That's because we don't have a numerical index at zero. 
Now, if I was to echo people Alex, we get the value 26. And if I was to do the same for Billy, we get the value 21. If I was to access something that didn't exist, we get an undefined index rather than an undefined offset that we saw before. So we have an offset and an index. They're the technical names for either a numerical index or a string like this. Okay, so now that we roughly know how to do this, let's look at a more complicated but real life example. Let's say we have a list of users that could come from our application, they could come from anywhere, maybe the database, uh, and these users had different properties. So again, I'm gonna create an array just here, and down here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create an array as the first element of this array. So this might seem a little bit confusing, but uh, just bear with me. So I'm gonna say that the username for this first user is Alex. And then on the next line, I'm gonna create the same thing like this, but assign it a new username. So what we're saying now is if I just pull this up so we can kind of see what's going on, like so, rather than saying Alex here and Billy here, we're creating an array within another array like so. So now what's happening is if I just pull this down onto a line so it's a little bit more readable, if we do a var dump on users, we should see the following. So we have an array of two items, but the first item now at a numerical index is an array. And the second item, again, at a numerical index is another array. Now what we've done here is essentially created a much more powerful structure. We can iterate over this and then go ahead and access username if we wanted to. And we could do that for each of these users. So when, for example, you see a website that lists through a list of users or a list of uh, forum topics or anything like that, this is pretty much what's going on uh, behind the scenes. So as a basic example then, let's access the first user and then grab their username. Now, if we just try this out, we know that we now have a numerical index because we've not assigned a value to an index. We could have done that, but we've just created two arrays within an array. If we were to e echo out, say, users zero, we know that that first value is an array. So the question is then, how do we access the username key? Because remember now, user zero is an array. And again, we can do a var dump on that and we see we now have an array not with a numerical index but with a string as its index name so we can echo out users zero because we now have an array inside of here we just again use square brackets and we can access the username property that will give us alex so we're saying the first element at key zero then within this new array the key that has the value username. So we can do the same thing for the next user by just changing this over to one because it still has the same property inside of here. We get Billy, there we go. Now, what you're actually doing here is you are creating a multi-dimensional array. All that means is you're placing an array within an array. It has multiple dimensions. Now, if that term sounded scary before, you should now be able to see that it's not really that complicated at all. So we can actually build onto this and create more levels of this. And at the moment, each of these users just have a single property. But what if they also had an email address? Now, again, what I'm gonna do is just get rid of this one here. I'm gonna get rid of this. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pull this down and indent it. This just makes it look a little bit more readable. Now I can define out another property to this particular user. So for example, Alex at code course.com like so and now I can copy this because remember this is still the first element of this users array and I can duplicate this down here and then I can change this over so Billy Billy at codecourse.com so now if we take a look at this here users go ahead and give that a refresh this looks a little bit more complicated now before I go any further with this what I'm going to do is if you are seeing output pretty much like this there's a nicer way to go ahead and output this. Uh, there are a couple of other ways you can do this, but the easiest way, if you don't have a particular PHP extension installed to format this nicely, is to go ahead and echo out pre, so these are uh, format tags with an HTML, so it will preserve the formatting, 
and then we can say pre like that. Now notice I'm also using commas here. We can actually use commas to kind of concatenate when we echo out, but you can of course do the following with dots. What we're basically saying here is whatever we var dump, we want to wrap this in an HTML pre tag and preserve the formatting of the var dump output. But just to keep this nice and simple, let's go ahead and use commas here because I think otherwise it probably won't work. So if we head over to the browser, give this a refresh, you can now see that this looks a little bit easier. So it's easier to see what's going on here. So again, we still have an array with two elements. The first element is an array. So this is a key or index zero. This is an array now with two items in, a username and an email. The next element is an array with two items in, username and email. So now what we can do is start to access these different things from within here. So if you want to challenge yourself, try and access the second user's email address. If you want to pause the video and go ahead and try that, if you're following along, try that now and uh, we'll go come back to this in just a second. Okay, so hopefully you went ahead and tried that out. But what I'm gonna do is test this out now and we'll see how we did. So I'm gonna echo out users. We know that we have zero and one, so we want access one. And then because we have that email in there now, we just do the following. So let me just comment this one out, give that a refresh, and there we go. So really it's just about looking at the structure of your array and drilling down into it how you need to. Now what I'm gonna do is go one level deeper just so we can drill this in. Let's say we had uh, each of these users has a set of likes, so things that they like. Now in this case, this is perfect for an array because we might have strings that we want to store in here. So what I'm gonna do is in here, create another array and I'm gonna define out a couple of likes. So let's say cats and food. Let's do the same thing for Billy as well. So let's say likes and just keep this structure the same. So we're gonna say that he likes books and likes cats, brilliant. So now we have the following. So we have two items still, but now we have an array with three items for the first person, and this has a username, an email, and likes, but the likes in here now is another array with two items in. So you can nest these as much as you want. It really depends on how complex the data structure you're working with is. But in this case, we now have two arrays within an array, we have one, inside another, inside another. Okay, so to access the first like here for Alex, how would we do this? Well, again, we just drill down into it. So again, let me comment this one out. I'm gonna go ahead and echo out users. The first user is zero. Now, before we did something like accessing the email, but now we want to access the likes. This is now an array. So if we were to echo this, we get an array to string conversion. But to get the first like, we just chain this on again. Zero is the first like, and we end up with cats. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, take a really good look at this, build up your own data structures, and try and access certain things. Now, most of the time, you're not going to be building up these up yourself, so you have to kind of get used to doing a var dump on data that you get back from somewhere, and then working out how you're going to loop over it. Now, what we're going to do now is take a quick, quick peek at a loop. Obviously, an array like this is useless without being able to do something with it. And in this case, we'd probably want to list through the users and then show them in the browser. So what I'm going to do is get rid of that var dump just down there. And I'm going to use something called a for each loop. Now, we're going to be looking at these in much more detail later on. So don't worry if it doesn't quite make sense at the moment. But basically, we want to see for each thing we want to call that something and then within this block here we can do something with it so in this case we say for each users which is a plural as user which is a singular and then in here from that user for each time this loops it will now be this for the first loop and it will be this for the second loop so let's just do a var dump on user within this block and see what happens Let's go over to the browser, give that a refresh, and we now have this on the first loop, and then we have this on the second loop for it. Alex and Billy. And if we added more, we would get three loops or four loops or however many users we have. 
So now that we know that we've got user in here, what we can do is access username, email, or likes, and then drill down into that further. So for example, we know that each user has a username. Let's go ahead and echo out user, username. And what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna concatenate on an HTML break. You don't have to do this, but uh, this will just put it onto a new line for us. So let's go over, refresh. Now we have Alex and Billy. So rather than individually accessing these items, we're now looping over these. So let's leave things for here now. We're gonna be covering looping on arrays later when we look at loops. But just finally, I wanna talk about modifying a slightly more complex array like this. We already saw earlier that we can do something like users and then use the assignment operator to add a new user. But what happens if the data structure is a little bit more complicated like this is? Well, we can pretty much do the same thing. So let's just copy this just here. Let's copy this structure. And let's say, well, users, I want to add on this array just here. So again, this might look a little bit complicated, but take a minute just to have a look at what this looks like. Let's just change this over. So let's give this a new name and let's go ahead and add in some more interest. So let's say reading and cooking. Okay, so now if we just do a var dump, but using our pre tags to preserve the formatting of var dump, on users, and again, we want to end that tag just there, then we will see a new user in there. Now you don't have to keep the same structure, but in this case, because we'd potentially be looping over this users array, we would want all of the same properties. And if this data was coming from a database, you'd likely find that you would have all of these values in here. So now let's say we want to just take this and place it into the original array. So it doesn't matter whether we've placed it into the original array or we've added it on later, as we've just seen. Of course, we know this is gonna work in exactly the same way. However, what I want to do now is I want to modify the value in one of these items. So how do we do that? Well, we know that very simply, we can do something like users, let's say two, so that would be Josh just here equals and we could set this to anything so let's just set it to josh and see what happens so now notice that we just have a string in there so that's the basics of modifying even a more complex array it just works in exactly the same way but what i want to do is kind of drill down and modify say books here or cats here so let's modify this value here for billy from cats to dogs so in this case what would we do well we would say users we would pick that user, so this is zero, one, like so. Then we would go into this, into likes. So again, we use that by its key. And then the likes, we have zero and one. So here we would say one, and then we would assign that the value dogs. So now, if we look at this, we have Billy here likes books and cats. Give that a refresh, he now likes dogs. And of course, you could do the same here with the username, email address, any other properties that you've stored for a user. You could even add more properties onto this if you wanted to. So for example, I'll give you a very, very brief example. Let's say we wanted to add a bio or an about section to Billy. We would say, well, users one, because we know that that's Billy. And then we would just say about, and then in here we would assign a new value. So I am learning to code. Now we have the following, a string in here as well, I am learning to code. And we could just as easily go and echo that out as well using the same structure. So go ahead and try this yourself. Play around with this and get really comfortable with working with arrays. I've shown you pretty much everything you need to be able to actually uh, manipulate, create, update arrays. And really now it's just about practicing. Now, naturally, there are a lot more we can do with arrays. They're very, very powerful, but we will be covering that when we look at looping through arrays and when we look at array functions a little bit later.